welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studio, Jamie, Nadine. Uh, firstly, congratulations on having your film here. It must feel kind of local, but also being celebrated in this way, it kind of has two modes to it, right? Well, I can think back 40 years and remember coming over here to ski and eat, eat Mexican food down the street. So that's, sometimes I think of that Park City. Yeah. And then I think of the Park City in 1986 when they were just using the theater here on Main Street, and that was it, and nobody knew about the festival yet. So yeah, it goes back. Yeah, yeah. and but also like for documentaries, I feel like especially, it's often the case that over the last few years, we've found that the docs that screen at Sundance are the ones that have longevity throughout the year and get revisited a year from now. Yeah. Um, it must feel so satisfying for the filmmaking team to know that this is gonna set it on a path that means that people are gonna have opportunities to see it. Yeah, and ultimately, particularly when you're doing a film that uh, is concerned with creating a greater awareness about an important health issue, um, the, the broader and wider you go, it's, it's, it's what it's all about. And there's no doubt that as far as uh, docs are concerned, Sundance is the place. Yeah. I'm just glad to be here. Cool. So tell me about the intersection between Paper Tigers and Resilience. So when I saw the original study, the Adverse Childhood Experiences Study, just a straightforward piece of research um, that clearly laid out the fact that chronic uh, stress for children you know, in, in, in adverse situations, if they are not remediated, um, the threat to their wellness during their life is, is significant and, and staggering, in fact. That basic realization, that how do you tell a movie to convey the importance of educating the public around how to better protect our children from chronic stress and adverse childhood experiences, and what do you do once they have been exposed? Um, it took two movies. There's no way that one movie was going to tell the story. It's too, it's too profound. So, yeah. you know, resilience is really a look, it's sort of with a little bit more of a scientific lens, hopefully in an artful manner, you know, that's what we've tried to do, strive to tell it in a way that is engaging to the public, but really lays out the argument for why this cannot be ignored anymore. Nadine, when did you become an advocate for this? Like, as a pediatrician, what, when was it that you became specifically aware of this as an issue and wanting to become someone who kind of, like, kind of lasered in on it? I remember clearly it was 2008, and I was in my office, and my colleague walked into my office, and he said, have you seen this? And what he was holding in his hand was the Adverse Childhood Experiences Study, and um, that moment changed my career, I would say. Yeah. It's weird that the acronym for that is ACES. It is. It's going to be like more, you know, right. opposite to what, to what it represents. And, yeah. and, and at a time when we we're all looking at like prison recidivism rates and, mm -hmm. and mass incarceration and problems with homelessness and all these issues that like we really do have to look at like these sorts of things in children as to like to, to really have an impact on the future. I know you're obviously working with Geraldine Dreyfus and, and Karen Pritzker and um, people like that. I mean Geraldine's company is called Impact. Right. But having doing work that you feel like might actually change something, um, what's kind of the social campaign and those sorts of structures that you have to think about now as filmmakers that go along with the film that will help it actually have meaning for the people that need it most. Right. I, I, my advice to any documentarian who is doing an issue related or impact focused film is to spend some time getting to know the community that could best use the film as a tool for themselves and form those alliances and benefit from their wisdom as you're developing the story and the project, um, you know, d develop that connection so that when you're done, you have something that they want because the communities nationwide right now that are trying to disseminate this important information, they're, they're well established, they're working hard, and you know, my relationship with them, I, I'm only as good as they are, and their ability to spread this story, and today with our, you know, the, the great ways that we have new platforms to get movies in front of people, your allies can be your distributors, and I've seen it firsthand. So what are you most excited about? Because I know that there was news this morning that um, distribution had been secured for the film, so congratulations on that. That, must be that was a great way to start the morning. <laughs> yeah. Did you know ahead of time that that was close? No. I, I'd, I'd heard some whispering, but you know, I wanted to wait and 
it ain't, it ain't done till it's done. So yeah. And so obviously that's an amazing feeling for a filmmaker knowing that this is going to get out there and get out there as the two projects together. Yeah, dinner's going to taste a little better tonight. Yeah, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure it will. Yeah. A lot of people are struggling with the altitude, but for you, you'll have reason for the excuse tomorrow morning, I guess, yeah. which is great. And and with the Redford Center and everything, are they, like, is this a central issue that will continue with your projects going forward? Or is this, okay, we spent some time, we invested some money, we got the right people in front of the camera, we've got these projects done. Um, yes, this issue is by no means solved, but the next issue we want to address is X. My partner, Karen Pritzker, uh, we formed KPJR, which is our film company, and we really, are, we're, we're, our focus is to look at those difficult issues that need to be spread into the cultural dialogue. And we started out with a film about dyslexia that premiered here four years ago. And what we saw come out of that was an extraordinary burst of awareness, particularly online, because the community online that formed around that film has sort of become the backbone of, for any parent that wants to understand dyslexia. So we know the power of, of the, the intersection between social media, online communities, and film. So that's what we'll be doing here. And I'm sure we'll do it in the future. We're now looking ahead to see what's the next challenge. What are, what are the other things that are, you know, we all need to know a little bit more about that we're resisting for whatever reasons? And Nadine, final words for the thing going on underneath that shirt, <laughs> um, making plans for how that little person makes its way into the world. Like, it must also, like, crystallize. I don't know if you've got other children already, but it must also crystallize kind of the meaning and the efforts and the work. And It really does. Um, it really does. Yeah, my husband and I have uh, three kids. And so this will be our fourth boy. Um, and um, the, I just have to say for myself, I'm really, really humbled and very proud to be a part of this project because it's about making the lives of kids and the adults they will become and our society that much better. And um, the, the film is really, really powerful. And I'm, I'm just happy to have been a part of it. Very cool. Well, we appreciate you taking out a few minutes of your day to come and stop by and chat with us. So thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.